for the approval of those minutes to uh, the regular November planning board meeting. Next set of minutes um, are the, the October 5th, 1993 uh, special planning board meeting. And are there any comments, questions, corrections? Judy? Mr. Chairman, I think this typo has already been noted, but on page two on the third paragraph down where there is a check mark yes. on the right margin. Yes, I saw the check mark there. I think it's applying to the second to the last word in that line, which is and, just a typo, but. So it should read recognizes horse, horses, no. And is concerned. And is concerned. Project. I was trying to figure that out. I saw the check mark there, so I figured somebody must have noticed that. <laughs> I said, Nad, no, <laughs> not. Okay, note that change. Any others? Is it appropriate only for the voting members to uh, vote? Or it doesn't matter? Okay. Do I hear a motion? Yes, Judy? Chairman, I move that we accept the minutes as amended. Moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Saying here and then, all those in favor accept the, mini, the minutes as amended, please raise your right hand. Those opposed, it's unanimous vote. They are accepted. Um, secondly, the correspondence during the past month. First, uh, a brochure or, or a newsletter from the Natural Resource Council of Maine, Traveling Smart. Um, I haven't seen this before, but I guess that's a regular monthly newsletter. It's a new one. That's why I hadn't seen it before. Um, a memorandum on the technical amendments which were uh, forwarded to the uh, town council. Who represented the, the uh, planning board? Maureen, thank you very much. Uh, I wasn't available. It was one of those nights when I had three family uh, things to do and just couldn't make it. Thank you very much, Maureen, for representing the planning board. Uh, thirdly, a letter from Verrill and Dana. I believe it's from Chris Nagel, the Wild Rose subdivision. Um, it uh, is a summary from Hilda Dudley, written by Chris Nagel to the planning board. Uh, also, a letter from Telmark, Inc., signed by uh, Anthony R. Farella is a field collection manager. Uh, a little bit of a threatening letter on the, uh, which we always enjoy. Um, the dealing with the potential blasting at that previously mentioned site. Mr. A, Chairman. Yes. Not to uh, stir the pot, but would it be appropriate for any member of the town to respond to this? I, uh, if I were a town uh, planner, I wouldn't have a job after I received a letter like this. It's I know, just, and that's my no initial reaction, just to get uh, furious at the, uh, I won't even, don't get me started, Tom. <laughs> uh, I think it's best not even to, to uh, respond to it. Maureen? It's already been responded to. Well, I did call them back and, mm -hmm. and explain to them that, that we wouldn't be liable, but they could write us letters if they wanted to. Thank you, Maureen. Good. Said it much nicer than either Tom or I could, I guess. <laughs> Uh, next to last, a letter from, uh, I believe it's Michael Hill, Town Legal Counsel, um, dealing with the Wild Rose subdivision and some of his recommendations. Lastly, and most likely everybody receives this at home anyway, the Executive Director's Report. Do you all get this mm -hmm. at home? All right, so enter it to the record. Any other correspondence? Seeing none, we'll move on to the uh, first item of old business this evening is a Wild Rose subdivision request by the Ragosa Corporation for amendments to the previously approved Wild Rose, a five lot subdivision located in the vicinity of Ocean House Road and Spurwink Avenue, section 16-2-5. Um, uh, yes, Steve. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, as in the past, due to a conflict of interest, I must excuse myself from this agenda item. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. Um, as I have in the past also, um, in the past I've, I've recused myself 
based on a conflict of interest which uh, really no longer exists, uh, finished the contract with Mr. Weinshank. I do, however, think that uh, um, while there may not be any existing bias, the um, um, perceived bias would be more than uh, what we really should even need to deal with at this point in time. Um, so at this point, even though our Vice Chair Tom Emery is here, uh, he has not been here to every single meeting uh, or each time this has been on the agenda item and, and I think he, he would rather have um, Judy Ladner chair this. That's correct, Mr. Okay. Chair. And I so, appreciate it very much. <laughs> okay, I'm sure you do. Um, Judy, thank you very much. First off, I'd like to appoint Mr. Cotter and Mr. Marvin to act as voting members to bring us up to five members. And um, I think since we've had a chance to digest some of the information and some new information we've received in our packets, I would like to ask the town planner to um, succinctly summarize what we're asked to act on this evening. I'd, I'd like to direct the board members to the um, the memo that you received this evening. It's entitled Wild Rose Subdivision and it's a proposed findings of fact. This was a motion drafted by the town attorney. It should be um, replacing the motion for board to consider which is in the memo that you received. So um, if you're starting off with a motion, this would be a good one to start off with. To start off with. Uh, what he has done in this motion is uh, through the findings of fact try to outline exactly where uh, the, the status of the approval is and I think uh, what we've come up with is that one the ordinance is ambiguous um, it, it states uh, certain things in some places other things in other places uh, his feeling is that that the applicants subdivision approval has not expired um, and he has drafted the the amendment the the motion to reflect that and that instead what the board needs to do is to address the changes to the proposed plat, uh, namely the, the adjustment of, of the lot line. Um, however, because the ordinance is ambiguous, because it may potentially be interpreted to need a reapproval because it may have expired, his motion covers that as well so that you will find that in fact it, it'll, it says if in fact this application has lapsed, uh, the ending part of the motion would grant reapproval. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board at this point? Uh, not having been at the last meeting, the only question I have is a uh, clear understanding of where the lot was realigned um, in order to meet the state requirement, Mr. five to one ratio. Weinshank, would you like to get up? Do you have a plan with you? I don't, but. Uh, I see that you all do, and I think I can describe it. If you look at the uh, subdivision line between lots four and five, where they meet Trout Brook. Oh, thank you. In the back. see uh, a lot of dashed lines mm -hmm. eat out about approximately 50 feet <clears throat> that has been turned in order to increase the brook frontage uh, on lot number four and that's the only change that's the full extent of the change what's that that's the full extent of the realignment of the lot that's line. the full extent of the realignment okay. there's some minor uh, correcting of the square footage is appropriate to that size and that's it okay thank you is that it, Mr. Emery? Yes, it is. Thank you. Are there any other questions about the lot line adjustment or any questions on the town attorney's memo? No? Um, I don't have any new questions at this point. Um, I would be happy to entertain a mo motion. Madam Chair, I would like to propose the following motion for the board to consider. 
Findings of fact. One, Rogosa Corporation was granted planning board approval of Wild Rose, a five lot subdivision located in the vicinity of Ocean House Road and Spurwink Avenue on June 14, 1993. Two, the applicant was advised by town staff that the subdivision plat needed to be recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds on September 15, 1993. Three, the subdivision plat was signed by the planning board on September 15th and recorded by the applicant in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. Four, Hilda Dudley, an abutting landowner, has brought to the town's attention that the subdivision plat was recorded 92 days after the planning board's June 14, 1993 decision approving the project. Five, Ms. Dudley argues that the applicant's subdivision plan is null and void because it was not recorded within 90 days of final plan approval pursuant to section 16-2-3-C2. Six, quote, final plan approval, unquote, is not a defined term in our ordinance. Section 16-2-3A8 states that if a performance guarantee is required, then all the standards of Section 16-2-4C7A, quote, shall apply and be met before final plan approval can be given, unquote. Seven, the ordinance is ambiguous as to what, quote, final plan approval, unquote, means. A general rule of statutory and ordinance construction is to read the ordinance as a whole to see if the intent of the legislature can be derived from the whole. Eight, section 16-2-4F, dealing with major subdivisions, requires the subdivision plat to be recorded within 90 days of the date the plat is signed by the planning board. Nine, Section 16-3-5 gives the planning board general authority to waive requirements of the ordinance in certain circumstances. 10, <clears throat> amendments to the original approval are required to bring lot four into compliance with state subdivision law and to amend one of the conditions on the original approval. 11, the proposed amendments to the Wild Roads subdivision are substantially in compliance with the subdivision ordinance. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted, and the ambiguity in our ordinance, and that the town told the applicants that it, ha that it had until September 15, 1993 to record the subdivision plat, that the previous approval of Wild Rose subdivision remains valid and in full force and effect. It is further ordered that to the extent the prior approval of Wild Rose subdivision has lapsed, that based upon the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Ragosa Corporation for the Wild Rose subdivision is reapproved, as amended to adjust the lot line between lots four and five, and that the applicant's request for an extension of time to comply with the conditions of approval be granted. The planning board notes for the record that Technical amendments to section 16-2-3 are now being considered, which will clarify its meaning. Furthermore, this decision is based upon the specific facts presented. This decision is, therefore, of little precedential value. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Do I hear a second? Second. We've had a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, vote show four in favor, one opposed. Motion carries. Good luck, gentlemen. Um, I guess at this point I'll ask if the board would care to hear any comment from the public. I don't have any objection. Uh, we've already voted on the on the procedure, but I, I figure if people have come before the board, I... Yeah. Okay. Mr. Negley, you can make a brief comment. Well, 
My name is Chris Nagel. I represent Hilda Dudley, um, the abutter. I just want to note for the record two things. Um, we put a lot of thought and energy into some proposed conditions, which this board at its public meeting has it not even addressed or admitted it's seen. I also want to note it for the record that this board did nothing more than read a document written by a town attorney who wasn't at any meetings and pretends to adopt that as an informed decision. Now, I've been at this planning board for a long time, and I've never seen a board simply take the town's attorney's opinion and read it and pretend that's its actual decision, especially when you haven't seen it before tonight. And as someone who takes part in the public process, I'm extremely disappointed that you gave no opportunity for public input on a reapproval of a project that doesn't meet your own comprehensive plan. You railroaded this one through. You gave no opportunity for meaningful reconsideration by the abutters as you reapproved a plan. You didn't even let us have anything to say. And I am disappointed that that process exists in this town. I think it's illegal. I think it violates the Freedom of Information Act. I think you haven't done anything except do what the town attorney told you to do, and you're supposed to do more than that. That's what the taxpayers have you here for. We're disappointed. We're going to consider our appeal options, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Nagel. Um, I'm sorry that we didn't mention we had your memo. I think we all did read it. Thank you very much. The next order of business that comes under new business, we're slightly ahead of schedule, but I believe the uh, representative of the applicant uh, is here. Um, new business, the Inn by the Sea site plan amendments, request by the Inn by the Sea for amendments to the previously approved site plan, section 19-2-10. Um, this is an issue where uh, this application has, has been uh, approved Previously, um, they are coming back for amendments. There's, uh, my understanding, no need to uh, deem that the application is, is complete, nor is there any uh, reason, unless the board uh, should so wish, to hold a public hearing. Um, what I would ask, so we can jump right into this, number one, uh, are all the members of the uh, representing the applicant here? So you'd like to get started? We're slightly ahead of schedule. That's, that's why I ask. Are you think, all here? I think Maureen would direct us to proceed. Okay. Um, I, I think the next issue is because uh, in the material submitted, um, our fire chief uh, recommends that the emergency access uh, that was proposed not be um, accepted. I think it might be easiest if you explain to us those items that will, are still being requested to uh, uh, be changed or amended and uh, sort of help us decipher in, in the, the plan that you did submit to us what, what stays and what's deleted. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the Inn, I'm here this evening. My name is Stephen Moore. I'm with Moore and Sheridan, Landscape Architects in Portland. Um, I apologize for the confusion over the relocation of the fire access road. We had conversations with the chief this summer wherein we thought we had an understanding about a potential for relocation. And subsequently, the chief has visited the site, met with Maureen and I as he outlined this memo of October 13th to you, and drove around the site with a new ladder truck, and found, in fact, that we had some deficiencies in turning radiuses. So we're withdrawing uh, the request for changes to the fire access lane, as are outlined on your drawing. What that changes are the deletion of the transplanting of the trees and the additional plantings. So the request that's before you this evening really covers just essentially two items. Number one is the deletion of the proposed widening of the pavement at the front of the inn to provide a, a service pull-off area. In the past, the service vehicles had been coming up and parking in the area where we have handicapped parking proposed. And the inn's concern when we did the plan originally was we wanted to provide an area 
right here by the two large uh, pines that are out front for a pull-off area. So the plan that you approved showed a narrow pull-off area for the service vehicles to pull in and carry their goods across. What the inn has done through their management is provide for smaller vehicles, smaller vans, and uh, off-hour deliveries so that we no longer need that service area that was shown in the front because of their own internal programming. So we're asking the board to allow us to delete that one piece of the plan, which would mean nothing more than leaving the site the way it is right now. So if we were to drive out there now, what you see is what we're asking to keep. The second change, in the original plan, we had anticipated taking the existing 12 by 16 shed, which is located, or was located right here, and moving it up and over in here, and then adding on a four foot uh, recycling box on the back so that we could use that for storage and recycling. When we uncovered that shed and started to get ready to move it, we found two things. Number one, that the timbers and the pressure treated wood that was used underneath and the decking that was used for construction for the platform were really significantly rotted, much more so than you'd see from the exterior. The second thing was that in terms of access and internal layout, once this building was looked at for the proposed use in here, the inn staff decided they wanted a little different internal layout in terms of the door width and how it relates to the inside of the building. What we did at the time was we slid the existing building out of the parking lot area and then went ahead and built a new building at those same dimensions, the 12 by 16, with the uh, shed on the back, anticipating that but what happened is that all the goods and materials that are currently stored in the existing shed would be moved over. Well, in the process of it sitting there for the summer after it got moved and the parking lot was built, the storage that goes on in that building now that relates to the grounds, that is some of the tarps, a uh, piece of the lawn mowing and, and lawn care equipment, and some of the other hoses that are stored in there were moved over into this building. But this building is used now for all internal storage of trash and recycling. The inn still kept all of their uh, towels and sheets and quilts that are used for Building 6, which is what is called the Beach House, which is the one closest down to the beach here, and these two units in that building. After operating that through August, what the inn decided was, can we request of the town to keep that building in its new revised location shown and highlighted here and shown in your plans to really facilitate their storage and leave that building in place and construct a small walk up to it. So the building that's shown here is the existing 12 by 16 square foot building which was moved over and will be kept and used as an accessory use as storage. And this building will continue, the newly constructed building will continue to be used for a trash with the recycling bins on the back and about 50 or 60 percent storage for primarily lawn care, but also a few miscellaneous items um, such as some of the, the deck furniture from the, the pool area. So the request is really limited to those two items, to delete the service area in the front of the inn that you had approved and to allow the inn to keep the 12 by 16 building which has been pulled off to the side of the new parking lot and to allow its continued use for storage. So that's the full extent of the request. Thank you very much. Uh, questions, comments? I have Tom. This may sound overly simplistic, Steve, but uh, if we were to go out there, and, and uh, I haven't been out to the inn lately, if I were to go out there and, and uh, watch a fire engine come on an emergency access road, would it be coming on the red lines that are on the plan, or would it be to the left? Which one is which? What? the board approved earlier this year was the access lane um, to the inside or to the inside of the former Clark House. Okay. So that what we want to do is keep that exactly where it was proposed and not use the access that's over towards Clark. So we're dropping any and all requests and what you will see out there at the end of November is what you approved back in April, which is that 14 foot wide emergency access lane pulling it in here. The reason, the primary reason for the chief's concern is that there's a fire access lane 
right here that sweeps between building one and the inn, and that's gravel under grass. The alignment in here works well for the chief, which is why he wanted to keep that. This turning radius in that sweep does not work. It doesn't seem so until you, you imagine it or place cars in those parking spots and then the, the turning radius is, uh, I assume, would be right. pretty difficult. Other questions, Tom? Uh, I guess I'll get to a bit. Is it your intention that you'll resubmit another plan that, uh, based on the comment board comment tonight? Correct. But the, it's my understanding that we won't be granting approval tonight because we don't have a plan in front of us? Uh, Maureen, okay. I yield to the planner. The proposed motion um, that's in the memo would allow you to approve it tonight, but we require the applicant to submit new plans to me so that you have a record in the office of what the board has approved. We, we would approve am the amendments based upon the sketch. Right. Okay. That's all. Other questions or comments? Judy? Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Moore, you're still proposing that the gravel, uh, the emergency access road would be gravel. Yes. Okay. And um, I guess this would be to Maureen. Was there a condition on our original um, approval requiring year-round year um, passability and plowing in the winter of this road? Um, we've usually not required that. I mean, it's something that, that is, it may be in another ordinance. Uh, it's expected that emergency roads that are required by the fire chief would be kept plowed and open year round and I know that um, with other other emergency access roads in town he, he just goes around and tells people to move things if they're being blocked. Okay. Thank you. Stephen? Um, this is a question for Maureen or someone who may remember that when we approved this before. It was my understanding, and I may be incorrect, that uh, we had requested that the parking areas be screened by shrubbery from Route 77. Was, was or was that not a condition of uh, the plan last time? It was, if I might address that, it was not a condition. We actually showed on the plan you approved um, plantings out in that area between the front of the parking lot and 77 those additional plantings so it doesn't show up as a condition it was on the approved plan the planting right now that's out there is about 50 or 60 percent complete the planting that's in the process of going in right now is the planting right towards the Routenbergs so all of the planting is not in yet nor is the subsurface disposal system put in the construction is still ongoing out there and will be for at least another three weeks four weeks so the planting will be put in, and it does show up on the approved plan. Steve, is your question that have plantings been removed from the original plan within this? No, that's not my question. Okay. I, for some reason, I thought there was a condition that there were going to be some plantings done along the front, on along the 77 frontage to screen the cars from view from Route 77. On the plan that, that you have in front of you, if you look at the entrance driveway, there are two banks of plantings here and here that are outlined in the dark line, yeah. here and here, which are a portion of those additional screen plantings. Those are, those are new plants. And then when the emergency access drive comes in, we're moving three of the trees that are in here and pulling them up into this buffer area. So those three circles were the response to, I guess, a comment from the board earlier back in the process and we included them in the plan that you approved. Okay, but well you said that <clears throat> 50 or 60 percent of the planning has been done. The only part that has not been done is the part closest to the Rottenberg's house? The planting that is in place right now is the planting over here in Rottenberg's, in this portion right here. Oh, okay. Because that parking lot was put in back earlier this summer and the intent was to get planting in there right away to, to help buffer that. The planting that has yet to be done are the trees in here and this little bit of planting up in the front. Thank you. I guess that, that raises a question in, in my mind. How, many, how much of the planting um, that was originally approved uh, what inside the, the limited work lines has been removed in this? I mean, 
are, there, are you proposing additionally to remove plantings that were approved before? No, we are not. The only plants um, that have been removed from the site from the initial approval meeting 1986 were the four uh, thundercloud flowering plum, which were infected with a canker. They were the ones that used to have the little twinkle lights in them, if you remember those. I and remember got, those well. Yeah. And they got canker in them and were taken down. Caused by the lights? No. no just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> A note here on the plan, uh, just to the uh, west of uh, proposed septic uh, chamber system field, it says two existing pines to remain, um, and then it points to one, or I guess there are two there, but sort of um, less noticeable plan. I just want to make sure that um, in, that in, in perhaps some of the erasing of, of trying to move it over here and then, and then moving it back again, we're not losing. I mean, that, that was a key issue at the, at the time of approval to, to make sure that that's well screened. Uh, the parking was, a, it was an issue at that time. I, I want to make sure that what, uh, we're not making any changes in that sense. You're not making any changes in the screening of either of those lots, and in fact, we're adding screening, as Mr. Okay. Parker has said along the front. Okay, up here at the, the top, between what will remain as the uh, emergency drive and the major entrance, there's um, a work line that says delete due to relocation of emergency access. Will you keep those three Austri Austrian pines? I apologize. that. I've lost you. You're talking about the three Austrian pines near the fence that where it comes through. There's three Austrian pines right here that when the emergency access drive goes in, we're going to Vermeer spade those and move them right up into here. So there's okay. there's three pines that are okay, affected by that. Okay. But the plan, the notes to the plan right now say delete due to relocation of emergency access. I assume that because you're not moving the emergency correct. access, that will no longer be a delete. That's correct. The only pieces that we're asking the board to act on are strictly limited to the shed and that front service area. All the planting notes need to drop out because the emergency access will stay where it's approved. Question I have um, referring to um, where it says delete new paving. Uh, and you show in red the paving dropping to the south of what uh, was to be the relocated curb. What's the distance behind or even from that curb back to that uh, proposed? What I'm concerned about, that was not handicapped parking before, um, even though that was proposed for service. Um, isn't it advantageous to have that just for backing radius and, and room to turn those handicapped spaces? I, I apologize. I couldn't follow. Are you talking about the handicap parking in here? Yes, I'm sorry. The well, you, you have it show it shaded in green, I think. The little area that you proposed to fill back in? This area yes. here? Yes. What I'm saying is, uh, isn't it just as reasonable to leave that? I mean, is there some reason to, to move it back down? It, it exists in this condition no. now. And but, but there's no handicapped parking there There's now. no handicapped parking there, but there is a 24-foot wide okay. access lane behind the handicapped parking. So there's adequate turning radius both So there's 24 out. feet with the curb as it is now. That's correct. That's fine. Other questions from the left bank? Any others? I, I think just for the record, I understood this plan to be redlined because it was the plan that you wanted to submit to Maureen once you found out that you couldn't relocate the access road. This was the original plan mm -hmm. you wanted to submit with the red marks showing the relocation of the access road. Having a negative positive uh, problem here. And I think once I understand that, then it's clear. I, I have all the confidence in the world that you and Maureen can work this out. I, I think we're clear. Yeah, yes. yes. She's giving me a thumbs up, Tom. So, yes. Fine. Technically, other than the two issues being the delete the front service area and the shed relocation and construction, where it says delete, you would keep, and where it gives instructions to make a change, it would be deleted. That's correct. And we can stand on our heads and watch. That's right. Yeah. Negative, positive. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Tom. I can still remember how to read. I'll go. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, the findings of fact, the in by the sea is requesting amendments to the site plan approval granted in April 1993, which require review under section 19-2-10. Two, the relocation of the emergency access lane will not provide adequate access to the site by the ladder truck and therefore is not an adequate substitute for the approved emergency access lane. Three, the plan depicts revisions which will not be approved by the planning board and should be revised to reflect the approved approval granted. Four, the plan substantially complies with section 19-2-10 of the zoning ordinance. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the request by in by the sea located on Bowery Beach Road for amendments to the site plan be granted subject to the following conditions. Condition number one, that the emergency access road shall not be relocated but remain as approved in April 1993. All other proposed revisions to the plan relating to the emergency access road, such as landscaping regrading, shall revert to the originally approved plan. Two, that the plans be revised to reflect the planning board of approval. Two copies of the revised plan shall be provided to the town planner prior to any additional work uh, at the site. It's been moved. Do I hear a second? It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor of the motion as read, please raise your right hand. Those opposed? It's a unanimous vote. Congratulations. Thank you. Good I luck. I apologize for the double negative. <laughs> no, that was fun. It gave us a little more <coughs> work to do tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other business to come before the uh, planning board? I would just note, and, um, and I don't mind it being part of the meeting, that um, I know this, this board always tries to um, um, include the public and public comment whenever we can. I think tonight was an example where uh, taking on public comment outside of a public hearing uh, uh, gives an opportunity for the public to take a swipe at the board uh, when uh, whether their rationale or reasoning uh, was justified or not. And, and I think it's just, you know, this is a learning experience for all the board members here, uh, all of us. And uh, I, I think sometimes there are, if we can tend to limit public comment to public hearings, we won't open ourselves up in the future to, uh, it's very tough to respond uh, to a public comment. If we don't respond to public hearings other than general comment afterwards. Uh, this isn't a d debate situation, and, and uh, we just open ourselves up to uh, some some public comment. I'll say no more about that. Any other business? No. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Motion second. All those in favor? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.